Hi there guys and welcome to the fourth tutorial in the SAMP for Beginners tutorial series. Um, I know that I said that we're going to take a look at the code but I actually lied and I know that I should feel ashamed but we have to cover some things before we can touch the code because otherwise you will be lost for sure. So and as the picture to the right implies theory goes hand in hand with practice. So today we're going to talk about variables and subroutines. Now don't be scared about names because I'm going to explain everything. So now the first thing, variables. Well what is a variable? Well if I quote Wikipedia, it is in computer programming a variable or a scalar is a storage location and an asso associated symbolic name or an identifier which contains some known or unknown quantity or information, a value. Okay, so that probably didn't make any sense for you. So I'm going to try to explain it in another way. Basically, a variable is something that contains a value. Now this symbolic name, as Wikipedia wants to say, uh, is actually just a name. Now if we create a variable, then you're going to give it a name and a value. And if you want to use this val value anytime, then you can just use the name. So that's the basic uh, description of a variable. You have a name, you have a value. To use the value, you use the name. Simple. Now, there are some issues though. You have to decide what data type you're going to use. Now, these are a few of the data types available. Now the data type is the type of the variable because the programming language wants to know what kind of variable it is. And data types is what kind of variable uh, what kind a variable is. So the first one is a boolean. Now a boolean can either be true or false. So if we for instance take my tutorial as an example my tutorial, if I ask you a question, is the tutorial good? Then you can, of course, you could ask uh, or say, well, it's kind of good, but let's pretend that you could only say if it's true or not true. That could be a boolean. So the boolean could be, is the tutorial good? True or false? We then have integers, and an integer is just a whole number. So an example would be 24. We then have floats, and basically what a float is, is not a whole number, but a float. <laughs> That's the, easy, uh, the easiest thing there is actually. It's not um, a whole number, uh, but a float. That's all I can say. As you can see here, my example is 74.234. So if I'm going to give some other examples, then an integer could be 14 and a float could be 12 point six okay and then we have a string and a string is basically a text and usually you surround a text or a string with um, speech marks and then we have something called array now this is kind of complicated so we have to learn some things from Wikipedia first so going on to the next one array in computer science an array type is a data data type that is meant to describe a collection of elements, values or variables, each selected by one or more indices, which is identifying keys, that can be computed at runtime by the program. Okay, so I'm going to explain this now. In the first thing you want to know is that this is a collection of var values, basically. So if you want one name for a lot of values, then you can have that. The second thing I want you to understand is what they mean with computed at runtime is that you can actually change the, the values while the script is running. And that's something which is very dynamic and very useful. You could, for instance, have all the players stored in an array, and then you can basically access all of them and do something with their values. 
I know this ki is kind of complicated, but I'm going to show an example. So on the next one, to create an array or any other variable, we have to use the keyword new. Now, in as Wikipedia says, in the C++ program language, as well as many other C++ based languages, new is a language construct that dynamically allocates memory from free store and initializes the memory using the constructor. Now I'm going to be very basic with this. I am not going to uh, keep uh, doing things more complicated. I'm not going to talk about constructors, free store or any memory. What I'm going to tell you though is that new is going to allocate memory basically for your new variable. So basically this means that you create something new and allocates memory for it. Okay, simple. Moving on to the next one is how to create an array. Well, it's actually quite easy. You first enter the keyword new, of course, because you're creating something new and allocating memory for it. And then you have the name of it. And this could be anything as long as it's one word. And this, even though this is text, you don't use speech marks. You only write the name and what you then do, and this is something which identifies if it's an array, you use these brackets. Now, these brackets, uh, well it depends of, on your keyboard of course, but usually it's on 8 and 9, and to do them you click Control alt 8 9 So that's the brackets that you're going to use on arrays. Okay, so what do I mean with null or backslash zero? Well, what I mean with this is that if you, for instance, and this is called initialization, so if you give my array the value of yes, it's always going to use all of these slots, and the, the amount of slots is the number which you write in here. So this array can hold four values. Remember though that you always have to have the null character or slash zero in it. However, this is nothing you write. This is something which is done by the compiler. So that's nothing you have to, to care about really. You just remember that if you have four, you actually can only have three values. S because you always need uh, the backslash zero one otherwise you will get errors, is crea creation of other variables. Well, a string is actually an array of characters. And moving on to the next one is an integer, and to create an inter integer, you of course have to allocate memory for it, you then give it name, you then initialize, and give it the value 12. If you would give it a value like 12.5, you would get an error, because it's the wrong data type. If you want a float, you have to add, and do remember to capitalize the F here, you have to add float, column, the name is equal to, and then a float value. And since this is a statement, or an instruction, sorry, you always end with a semicolon. And then we have the boolean, like is my tutorial good, and we can equal it, or initialize it to true or false. Okay, so moving on to the next one, and speaking of variables, what the hell is a define? Well, a hashtag define is kind of like a variable, however it is static, it cannot be changed on, on the runtime, so when you are running the script uh, you cannot change the define. This is good for things like colors, because you can define a color, and basically what you do is you write hashtag define and then the, the name of the color and then you write this code here and this is a code for a color and I'm going to talk about that later as well so that's the color on line R and now you can just use this name instead of typing this so if you use this name in the code it's going to type this when it's compiled okay so moving on to the next one now we're going to talk about subroutines and I quote Wikipedia, in computer programming a subroutine is a sequence of program instructions 
that perform a specific task packaged as a unit. This unit can then be used in programs whenever that particular task should be performed. In different programming languages, a subroutine may be called a procedure, a function, which is the actual name uh, that you use in Paul, a routine, a method, or a subprogram. I know, for instance, that you you are used to you you usually say method in Java and in PH, PHP you think I think you say function and and so on. But basically, they all mean the same shit. So, but in SAMP we usually use function. Now, an example of a function is firstly, I'm going to quote Wikipedia again. In computing, the native adjective refers to software or data formats supported by a certain system with minimal compute, computational overhead and additional components. So what this basically means is that a native function is a function that exists from the beginning. I'm not going to make it more complicated than that. And one native function which exists from the beginning is a send client message. Now, all subroutines has some parameters parameters uh, and some do not uh, actually but as you can see here you first write the keyword and the keyword is going to describe what kind of uh, function it is and then you write the name of the function and in this case it's send client message then within sorry parentheses uh, you write the different arguments or parameters now what this means is that when someone uses this command or f function, sorry, uh, they have to specify a player ID, a color, as well as a message. And as you can see here, it's an array because a message is always an array. It's an array of characters. Okay, so now we're going to construct our own function. And to do so, we firstly give it a name and as you might have noticed, I do not have any keyword. Shouldn't this give me an error? Well, I'm going to talk about that in the next sec section of the tutorial. So I want a player ID, and this one here is to do that one. That's a curly bracket. You do Control Alt and seven and zero on your keyboard, and they should pop up. And each function starts with one which is pointing towards the function and ends with one which is pointing outwards. We then have send client message and this is how you usually call a function. So we're calling this function up here and we're giving it the player ID, the color and a text. Now about the color, 0x is the initialization code which you has to have or um, well, you have to have this if you want to use the hex colors. And hex, I'm not going to explain hex today, but I might do it in a other tutorial. But basically what this is, two values of red. It The lowest one is 0, 0, and the highest one is FF. We then have two values for green, two for, for blue, and two for alpha. Now, alpha is the transparency. So if you want it to be completely transparent, you can just write 0, 0 but we want it to be visible for now. This should give me uh, a white color. So that's basically it for that section of the tutorial. We're going to move on. Now, what type of functions are there? Well, remember that I didn't have a keyword on my previous version function, sorry. And that is called a plain function. It's plain and simple. Now, that function is usually the one you want to use. However, there are some exceptions. Public ones, for instance, are used with timers. I'm, I haven't talked about timers yet, but I'm going to do in the uh, in the future. However, just keep in mind that public is for timers or includes. And the includes one uh, are basically... I'm going to talk about that in the next one. So that's what you use for public for for timers and includes and plain is the usual one you use the plain one if you don't have to use the stock or public one and basically the stock one hides error at compilation and I'm going to talk about more more about that later on 
and do remember that if you create a public function you have to forward it and all you have to do is to write forward then the function name and all the parameters or uh, arguments and then of course since this also is an instruction you end it with a semicolon and includes you say well yes includes is uh, basically a code uh, from an other file which is included into your file so you can for instance do a underscore samp include and this is going to include all the basic uh, native functions which are, you can use or you could just include your own script so if you have a script and you want to divide your scripts into several sections then you can just include them like this like balls.pwn uh, I have talked about pwn but I'm going to do that in the next tutorial and that's it and I just want to say that you are awesome for viewing this tutorial and you are awesome for learning this much and taking all this uh, into consideration I truly hope that you have learned something from this and I actually suggest that you watch this one more time if you didn't uh, understand something or you can just skip to one of the sections of the uh, tutorial but this should uh, make you ready to actually touch the code and in the next section I promise you that we will touch some code so thank you so much for watching and have a really nice day.